Good evening everybody and welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for tuning in. It is Tuesday the 30th of March 2021 and uh, 19 degrees out here at 10 to 7 in the evening and I'm just using the sat nav to do a 45 minute round trip. There's a nice function on there which I discovered just the other day. Uh, for the whole year I've not really spent any time looking at the sat nav and uh, I just realised there was a nice function on there which can take you for a ride of your decided destination, or sorry, duration. So you can say, from home, I want to go for an hour, 30 minutes, or whatever it is. Uh, you have to put in the time either in whole hours or 0.1 of an hour, 0.2, 0.3, 0.4, etc. Uh, so 1.5 hours or whatever. And you can either say, I want to go for a trip to a town, and it will guide you to, I don't know, Bury St. Edmunds, Colchester, Edinburgh, wherever you want to go. And I'm not quite sure exactly on what the settings are, but yesterday, or the day before, when I started trying this route out, it really was uh, a lovely route. Off we go. Let's get the sun visor down because it is quite sunny. Oh my goodness, look at this. <laughs> it's all the way up here. All right, buddy. Oh, that's when you know it's lovely to be on a motorbike. Look at the state of this. My goodness, wow. That is horrific. And you know, the most annoying thing is that those three-way traffic lights doesn't look like they're doing anything. They're just creating traffic, and why not? Don't do it, don't do it. It's lovely to be out here with you on an evening ride. The sun is just starting to go down. It's looking beautiful out here again, everybody. Absolutely beautiful. Lovely summer evening. And uh, just want to see what this feature does, where it takes us. And what kind of uh, what kind of lanes we're going to encounter because I will say when I um when I came along here the other night, the lanes were very impressive. They were lovely roads. Absolutely lovely. This motorbike is Effortless, absolutely effortless. It's a joy to be out here this evening. Absolute joy. And it does look as though it's taking me down similar lanes as it did yesterday. So let's just see how that works out and it goes. <laughs> Off he went. So yeah, guys, it's really exciting to be heading into the new season now. Thinking about the new season, the weather is now suddenly where you want it to be and uh, you know looking forward to my first test ride of the season on the R1250RS I've got the test ride booked in for a couple of weeks time just as we open up just as we uh, as the non-essential retail opens up and I'm also hoping to get out there on uh, some Triumph bikes KTM, Kawasaki, Aprilia, uh, all in the pipeline really. I'm just talking to the dealerships in the local areas to see what bikes I can take out and when. So hopefully I'll be able to do first ride reviews on uh, new machines from all of those uh, all of those dealerships. That'll be really nice. And also guys, I, I want to talk to you about the way BMW only allow one colour depending on the actual specification of the bike. I don't know how you guys feel about that. But basically, you know, the Sport comes in this colour. The Exclusive now comes in Pollux. I said Pollux, people. Pollux. Uh, a kind of green colour. And the, the basic R1200R, it then comes in a... In a red, I do believe. In red, yes. In red. Look at that over the bump. And uh, 
I mean, obviously, I like the red. Oh, no, 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 sorry, I'm lying to you. Hold on, I'm lying to you. It comes in black. The base R now comes in black. Before, it was, I think, red in the basic, and then white and blue in the sport, and the exclusive was uh, 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 grey, thunder grey, of course. The R1200R was thunder grey. So, I think, as, a, as someone buying a bike, you, you'd want a choice to have the specification in whatever colour you want. And I, I'm not sure if it's just a clever sales ploy by BMW. Because obviously you're drawn to the colour of the bike that you like the most, I think, personally. I think that's how it works. You're drawn to the colour. And then... Uh, and then you start to build the spec. You know, has it got the ESA? Has it got the quick shifter, centre stand? I don't know, whatever it is you like. You know, heated grips is an extra on all the bikes, as far as I'm concerned. And I think in this country, in the UK, you need heated grips. You have to have heated grips. Even in, you know, spring, you need the heated grips. You know, in some countries, it's not even a, a consideration, I suppose, because it's so warm. But, uh, but yeah, you definitely need the heated grips. Um, and, you know... There are other extras. A lot of people obviously go for an aftermarket can right off the bat. I'm not really interested in that personally, but I know lots of people are. So, you know, the way you build the bike then determines how much the bike costs. Here we have somebody parked in the middle of the road with their door open. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. See, there's a, there's a, there's a little, you know... Bit of, there's a concrete slab there where he could have parked up and just stayed there. But no, the middle of the road will be fine, of course. Yes, yeah, so anyway, so yeah, I'd be interested to see your thoughts on that, guys, with regards to how you built your bikes. I just basically normally just trawl the internet when I'm looking for a new bike. I'll trawl the internet for the spec that I want lowest miles and then just the best deal possible the best price and that's pretty much it really that's about as complicated as it gets um and i actually got this bike during lockdown so they delivered it to me it was a contactless delivery just like your pizzas and all that sort of stuff you know but yeah so no it was very good a very good uh, service from a BMW dealership in Swansea, whose name does escape me, but I will stick them up here. We'll give them a mention, because they were good guys. Um, on the sat-nav, they did me a good deal, because I was supposed to be getting a second-hand sat-nav, and then at the last moment, they gave me a new one for the same price as they quoted for the used sat-nav, so that was nice of them. And I know a lot of people will say that the sat-nav is a lot of money, and I agree with you. But there are some features on this sat-nav that you just don't get on Google Maps, you know, so that are specific to riding a motorbike. So that's nice, you know, that's something that's really comforting and useful, you know. I'm sure there are apps that do similar things to this sat-nav as well. Um, and I, as, as I have already alluded to, I think, in previous videos, I think BMW are going to have a look about how they, in, uh, how they integrate, sorry, how they integrate the sat-nav uh, onto future models. And I think it is going to be on the actual display of the bike, on the TFT screen. That is my thinking on that. I'm sure that's what I've heard. And I saw a video of a, of a new 2021 model of a BMW bike, and I'm sure the sat-nav was in the TFT screen. So yeah, so this, you know, this is gonna become defunct quite soon. We're going to carry on right and on to the right. The, the, the sat-nav is very, very easy to interpret. I, I don't need to listen to it. I can just have a glance every now and again. And we can see, you know, what it's up to. But these lanes, guys, while it's dry and bright... Oh, they're lovely. They really are great. Got to be careful, because I don't really know them that well, but... Bit of a bump there too. Bump, bada, bump, bada, bump, bada, bump, bump. Past a farm. Past a local farm. And this road is called the street. 
in Ringtail Green. And look at it, it's just beautiful. The cyclists are out. Good evening, everybody. Look at the uh, look at the greenery, the scenery. It's very, very nice. I always find on these lanes, I always get someone who knows them really well and they're, they're just looking to go quicker and I'm just like well look I don't really know where I'm going I'm going to take it easy and just enjoy the ride but the, look the house look the thatched houses look at this Tudor Tudor this is lovely really I've got to go right now coming up I'm turning right I think the road just goes round to the right, does it? I'm not really sure. No, it doesn't, no. Uh, no, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't. Oh, this was it the other night now. The trees, you see how they're just bending in towards the middle of the road? Absolutely beautiful. I don't know what the speed limit is. The limit is just as fast as you can go, basically. Oh, I love this. Beautiful. Just got to be careful. It's dry, it's bright, and I can see the road surface. And, uh, yeah, it's... Oh, look, here we go. Ah, oh, fun's over. Welcome to Fleshy. Fleshy, Fleshy, Fleshy. Yeah, so this is Fleshy, everybody. A lovely, lovely village. Not far from Chelmsford in Essex. There's a pond, see, look, a lake, a pub that may even be open soon if you're lucky. But these are the kind of rides that I really, really enjoy. You know, some country roads, some swinging it left and right. In the middle, some quaint little villages. And then out we go into the 60. But I don't think I can go 60 if I remember rightly. It's a little bit of a rascal left here. Yes, it is. A little bit of a rascal left. And then a rascal right. I'm just getting over this verge. Ooh, going left, apparently. God. It's a beautiful view. What a beautiful view. Really, really. Phil, don't pay attention to the view, pay attention to the bends. Is there any rule about going up here, do you reckon? Oh, I don't think there is. It's very pleasant. It's very pleasant out here, isn't it? So. As you can see, this is the R1250R. Uh, boxer engine, 134 brake horsepower. Standard can. We have got the ESA towards the uh, bottom middle here, dynamic ESA. That's what does all the magic with the suspension. We've got the uh, center stand. We also have the fairing towards the bottom. Brembo brakes, which are really, really awesome brakes. The gold forks are basically, they change when you get the dynamic ESA, which is a £1,300 additional extra. So it's not small change, guys. Uh, so, yeah. Um, and then moving around to the front of the bike, we've got the LED lights which are much better than the standard lights they put on the bike. And the daytime running light is on at the moment. You can see that. Uh, if you flip on the main beam, 
that's what it looks like. There's a slight delay before it all coming on, but you can see that that's what the phone main beam looks like when it's on. You flip it off, and uh, the top one's staying on, don't know why. Touch that again. <laughs> Daytime running lights, I'm getting eaten by gnats now. Eaten by gnats. So, those are the lights. Uh, the distinctive R1250R, which is on the front of all of the uh, R1250R bikes. And then, of course, one of the main features of this bike is the shift shaft drive. Shift drive? Shaft drive, Philip. One of the main features is the shaft drive. I had a question about the shaft drive just the other day, actually. Uh, somebody asking if you notice it. Guys, you twist the accelerator and the bike goes. That's it. There's no drag. There's no weird sensation. It's just a beautiful ride all the way along. And... Uh, yeah, you've got all these holes, hole here, hole there, hole here, hole there, hole there, and hole there. You can get fillers for that if you want to. I'll leave them open, I don't really mind. Uh, and of course on the back again, the Brembo brakes, the gold colour Brembo brakes, absolutely awesome. Uh, I've got the keyless ride on this bike, so that means the flap opens automatically when you turn it off, which is great. Um... The mirrors are really excellent on this bike. They stay in place. You can see behind you. But most of the time, guys, you should be looking forwards anyway, as we know. This bike has got cruise control. It's great. Really easy to use. Um, the ABS, you can turn it off and on. Uh, not on the fly. You have to be stationary to do that. But again, I'll leave the ABS on. I like the controls. This bike has got the SOS button. So if you get stuck, if you have a crash, press the button. And apparently the cavalry come out and see you, which is nice. Uh, what else can I tell you? I have got the side racks for the cases. As you know, I've got cases for this bike. But I haven't got the rear rack. And I quite like it without that. It's aesthetically, it looks much nicer. So, uh, so yeah. That's pretty much it, guys. That's, that's the walk around that I wanted to do for you today. Just have a look at the bike. Um, and, uh, yeah, the tyres that go on the bike are standard are Mezlers, Metzlers, and uh, I think they're good. I don't know what your thoughts are, but I think they're excellent, really. Very, very good tyres. So, uh, yeah, that's about it, really, guys. Yes, she is a lovely-looking motorbike. Okay, so, on we pop. Onward and upward, people. Onward and upward. Look over my right shoulder. Nothing coming. Excellent. And off we go. Oh, look, there's a house just there, look. I came past this the other night, actually, that house, and it's a little bit uh, interesting because it's kind of made out of, uh, I don't know what, recycled materials? <laughs> That's the that. Still get you every time. Yeah, so uh, a little walk around the back there, guys. Hope you like that. And now we're going to have a few more lanes. Definitely a scope for a few more lanes before we go. Going to turn right at this juncture. This guy always seems to be out walking his dog, you know. They were out the other night, these guys, about this time, was it? Maybe a bit earlier. Not quite sure, but uh, anyway... These lanes are superb, guys, I just have to tell you. Absolutely superb lanes. Lovely, uh... Oh, Philip. You took that way too wide when you couldn't see what was around the corner. Plus, you hadn't got the brake covered. Oof. Covered. Oof. There we go, guys. That's exactly what can happen. It's a little bit dangerous. And that's why I don't ride around with my side cases on either. But look, it's just like a a beautiful single lane out of a fairy tale. Look, look at the trees. It's so pretty. So there we go, nothing coming. 
off we go. It wanted to take me the same way as it took me the other night, you know. So we'll go the same way, I suppose. Even though I put in less than an hour, it's still taking me that way. This is very picturesque, I think, personally. This road. You've got these houses here, hills there, and as we come round this corner, it just falls away. Lovely look. Absolute beauty. Look at it. Very, very pretty. Very, very pretty. Extremely pretty. There's a grouse in the road. Did you see it? Did you see it?
Oh, also, the cackle, the crackle, it kind of... It, uh... It... What can I say? It develops, that's the word I'm looking for. So the cackle and crackle on the exhaust, it develops, you know, as, uh... As you, uh, own the bike more. And it's great. I love that cackle and crackle. So, everybody, as the uh, ride is coming to an end, I just want to say to you, thank you very much indeed for joining me this evening for this video. To those of you who have subscribed, thank you very much indeed. Uh, really much appreciated. To those of you who have stumbled across the channel for the first time and you're just watching, please do leave me a comment below. Uh, if you want to leave me a like, leave me a like. And of course, if you'd like to subscribe, please do so. That would be very much appreciated. So it's been a pleasure riding with you this evening, everybody. Uh, but now it's time to go and have some din-dins. So uh, thanks for watching. And obviously, when you get back out there on your bikes, please do ride safe. Take care, everybody. All the best. And uh, thank you very much indeed. Take care now. Bye-bye. this while I've been charging the phone under my seat so as you can see I've got my iPhone underneath the seat charging which should work quite nicely hopefully let's see what it got up to shall we let's see what uh, what battery power it got up to It was on 40-something percent when I started charging it. 92, so that works. That works nicely. While the bike is running, it will charge your phone. Awesome. That's very good news. Now, to unplug, I have to lift both the seats off because the plugged-in bit is just there. I don't leave it plugged in. I turn that off. And just tuck it in. Put the seat back there. Back in place. And... Excellent. Good. So that's good. It charged while we were riding. 